People talk about disasters as if they're a bad thing, and that's fair, because they are. But it doesn't change the fact that human history has, to a remarkable extent, been shaped by natural disasters. So, today, we're gonna take a look at major disasters that changed history in unexpected ways. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History channel. After that, leave a comment and let us know what other historical calamities you'd like to hear about. Okay, time to get your masters in disasters. If you know one thing about volcanoes, it's probably that they're mountains with holes at the top that shoot lava out. But if you know two things about them, good for you, it's that they're among the most devastating forces on Earth. And if you knew three things about volcanoes, it would be that baking soda and vinegar do not mix well. The 1815 eruption of Mount Tambora in Indonesia, the deadliest eruption in human history, was a truly cataclysmic event, estimated to have slain 100,000 people during its initial blast alone but it wasn't long before its impact was felt across the globe. In addition to causing a weather disturbance that lasted three years, it also led to numerous crop failures. And as if all that wasn't enough, a new strain of cholera formed in the Bay of Bengal, enabled by the reduced temperatures caused by the eruption. Soon, it was spreading across the world, claiming tens of millions of lives. Real smooth, Mount Tambora. Real smooth. Few pandemics have been as devastating as the Black Death, but sometimes you just have to try and look on the bright side. The bright side in this case starts with the Black Death consuming Europe in the 14th century, burning through both peasants and princesses alike. Okay, that doesn't sound particularly bright, but the plague took out so many people that numerous fundamental aspects of life in Europe had to be completely reshaped in its wake, and many of the changes were actually pretty good. For example, the Black Death created a remarkable labor shortage, that sounds like a bad thing, but recent research has demonstrated that the shortage gave greater economic and political agency to all the still living laborers, particularly serfs. They soon began to agitate for better working conditions, and in those areas that had been most potently affected by the Black Death, the long-standing institution of serfdom began to crumble. So if you're grateful that you're not a serf, remember to thank the good old Black Death. But not in person, maybe just send an email. Before COVID-19 stole its thunder, the Spanish flu was arguably the pandemic most people thought of when they thought of pandemics. The disease ravaged the globe from 1918 to 1919, ultimately taking the lives of 50 million people and infecting many, many more. The disease also seems to have impacted those who were born shortly thereafter. Though it wouldn't become clear until many years after the flu abated, those who were born in 1919 were significantly more likely to develop heart disease and diabetes in later years. It's also been postulated that the flu somehow triggered an outbreak of encephalitis lethargica, a bewildering sleeping sickness that emerged during the same time period. No direct link has been found, but the Spanish flu was a first-class a-hole, so we wouldn't put something like this past it. Fans of the Netflix series The Crown will no doubt remember The Great Smog, a key plot element in the first season episode Act of God, unless you put The Crown on in the background to Netflix and Snog. For everyone who didn't pay attention to that episode, a combination of weather patterns and the extensive use of coal led to a blanket of pollution lying over much of London, resulting in widespread health problems and death among its inhabitants. In short, the Great Smog was a terrible way to see out the year 1952, and you have to wonder why they didn't call it the not-so-great smog. For many Londoners, using coal was a symbolic act as well as a practical one, because it tied into the notion of the hearth and home, an ideal that was particularly important in the troubling decades after World War II. Luckily, with the war being over, people could stop pretending the smog didn't bother them, and numerous environmental regulations regarding the usage of coal were put into place in subsequent decades. Though it lasted for less than 20 minutes, the Triangle Shirtwaist Fire would have tremendous consequences for American labor. You know, in addition to the consequences experienced by all the people caught in the fire. What started out as a small blaze soon engulfed the entire building and, because labor laws of the day were draconian to the point of cruelty, the doors had been locked in order to prevent workers from leaving on unauthorized breaks. The results were predictably catastrophic. Many workers who weren't outright engulfed by the flames jumped to their dooms trying to escape. The fire would have a significant impact on Francis Perkins, who witnessed the fire and later became Franklin Delano Roosevelt's Secretary of Labor, making her the first woman to hold a cabinet position. 
When she came to Washington, she would become a tireless advocate for the rights of workers and a key voice in the creation of Social Security, which would itself fundamentally transform the relationship of American citizens to their government. Also, when's the last time you heard of someone wearing a shirtwaist? I guess they all went up in the blaze. The Johnston Flood, also known as the Great Flood of 1889, is one of the most devastating floods to have occurred in the United States. It claimed the lives of over 2,000 people and resulted in millions of dollars in damage. The residents of the Pennsylvania town faced an uphill battle against the South Fork Fishing and Hunting Club, which had made changes to a dam that reduced the dam's effectiveness and caused the flood. However, the club was not found to be liable for any of the damage, which ultimately didn't matter because the club didn't have any assets it could have used to pay for any of the damages anyway. Though almost all of the suits failed, there was an unexpected result. The significant public outrage led to a major shift in American law. Rather than a fault-based system, the law would now be based on strict liability, which makes it easier to hold people accountable for the results of their actions, whether or not such actions were done with criminal intent. In other words, but we didn't mean to flood your town is no longer a viable excuse. The infamous Irish potato famine, the result of a blight that affected potatoes throughout Europe, was one of the most significant events in 19th century Irish history, fundamentally changing many aspects of the country's culture and society. One of the most significant impacts of the famine was the immigration of many Irish people to other parts of the world, including the United States. For example, in one of those fun quirks of history, the famine would ultimately give rise to one of the most powerful and influential political dynasties in United States history, the Kennedys. John F. Kennedy and his brothers were descended from the Irish on both sides. Their mother's family, the Fitzgeralds, had actually left Ireland largely as a result of the famine. Without the famine, it's entirely possible the Kennedy family would never have become this powerful and influential in American politics. That's the luck of the Irish for you, except the part about the famine and everything that happened to the Kennedys in the 60s. San Francisco has endured a significant number of seismic effects during its history, mostly due to the city's location along the San Andreas Fault, but also thanks to some incredible seasons from the 49ers, am I right guys? Back to earthquakes. A seismic 1906 quake led to major property damage and significant loss of life. However, the impact of the damage soon spread beyond San Francisco. Of particular importance was the amount of money paid out by British insurance companies to their customers in California. This, in turn, led to significant financial strain, the Knickerbocker Trust Company crisis, and the subsequent panic of 1907. We had extremely cute names for very serious things back then. The resulting financial chaos led to an increased demand for an overhaul of the financial system, and, after several pieces of legislation, the founding of the Federal Reserve. In other words, the 1906 earthquake was so strong it shook the whole economy and founded a new government entity. But did it win five Super Bowl championships between 1981 and 1994? No, only the 49ers can make that claim. In the United States, the 1930s was a period of profound trauma and really awesome swing music, so we'll call it a draw? In addition to the terrible economic conditions imposed by the Great Depression, many of those living in the Great Plains were forced to move by the Dust Bowl, which saw topsoil stripped by high winds and vicious dust storms screwing up the country's entire agricultural system for good measure, or bad measure. Along with the Depression, the Dust Bowl required government intervention to combat the crushing weight of poverty. The Works Progress Administration would come to employ many in various professions, including as artists. For example, the works of such renowned photographers as Dorothea Lange paint a vivid and haunting portrait of American life in the 1930s. Consequently, this became one of the most well-documented periods in American history. That's art from adversity for you. And we haven't even mentioned John Steinbeck's classic novel, The Grapes of Wrath, which follows a family displaced by the Dust Bowl to California in search of the new American dream. Oh wait, we just did. The Coconut Grove nightclub sounds like a fun, fun place until you add the word fire to the end of it. Occurring in 1942 in Boston, the Coconut Grove nightclub fire killed almost 500 people. If that sounds like too many people for a nightclub, hey, you're right. So what happened? Well, the club was incredibly overcrowded and there was only one exit, making it almost impossible for many people to escape. However, as is so often the case with these terrible events, there was an unexpected societal benefit. The hospitals where the victims were taken perfected strategies for dealing with traumatic burn injuries. At Mass General in particular, 
The hospital went against common medical wisdom of the time and covered the burns rather than attempting to remove damaged tissue. This practice proved to be effective in reducing infection, and it would set the stage for many other advancements in the care of serious burns. That said, it probably didn't do much for the nightlife industry. Come to the place that revolutionized burn treatment is a much harder sell than ladies' night. So what do you think? Which of these stories surprised you the most? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're at it, check out some of these other great videos from Our Weird History.